All right, everybody, this is Benzino of The Wild Report, and this is the Copperhead Snake. For the past few years, I've been exploring habitats all across North Carolina, relentlessly searching for the most feared animal in the eastern United States, the copperhead snake. These reptiles may have more misinformation spread about them than any other creature in North America, and very few people know the truth about these amazing snakes. As a result of the fear enshrouding this animal, Countless non-venomous serpents are killed every year under the suspicion that they could be a copperhead. The goal of this video is to shed light on this mysterious creature and show you the true identity of these incredible organisms. Now I'm sure that all of you have heard of copperheads and you've probably heard a good deal of myths and rumors about these snakes. I mean, these are probably the most widely distributed uh, venomous snake in the entire eastern U.S. and they have quite a reputation uh, because they have a venomous bite. Now, copperheads are pit vipers, uh, and pit vipers are the most common class of venomous snake that we do have in North America. That makes them in the same class as things like rattlesnakes uh, and cottonmouths, which are actually these guys' closest cousin. Now, don't climb with the stick, please. Get down here. He was knotted up pretty nicely. All right, as long as he doesn't climb up any higher. There we go. So, yeah, once again, these guys are the most common venomous snake in the eastern United States, and they're also, uh, in North Carolina at least, they are the snake that bites the most people per year, at least the venomous snake that bites the most people per year. But that doesn't mean that these snakes are more aggressive than other venomous snakes, and it doesn't mean that these snakes are mean. Uh, basically, copperheads are excellent urban colonists. So these guys are really good at making a home and making a living in suburban habitats. So these guys are found in neighborhoods. These guys are sometimes even found in urban settings, uh, in green spaces and parks in our cities. Uh, so we're actually pretty close to Raleigh right now. We're really only a couple miles outside of the downtown area. And uh, we just found him in this small pocket of woodland. Now, these snakes are so good at hiding under cover during the day. Uh, and that's what causes people to get bit often. So if you have stuff out in your yard, if you have any tin or old wood or old toys or anything like that, you're asking for copperheads. They, they love hiding up under those uh, pieces of structure, and they do that to hide from predators as well as to absorb heat. Now, it is obviously nighttime right now, and that's a good point to bring about copperheads. They are very active hunters at night, especially uh, during the summer and late fall uh, because it gets so hot during the day. Now the reason they're so good at hunting at night is because as pit vipers, they do have those heat sensitive pits right there in between their nose and their eye. And what, let, and what that lets them do is actually see like an infrared layout uh, of everything around them. So they can see any warm blooded animals that are around them. So right now, while he's looking around, he can see me with his eyes, but he can also see all of my body heat using those pits. Uh, and so that makes them extremely effective predators of small mammals. Now, obviously, small mammals include things like mice and rats, which you do not want inside your house. So, while copperheads are venomous, they do fulfill that really important ecosystem role uh, that other things that are not venomous fill. For instance, black rat snakes and king snakes, uh, which many people do like to keep around because they prey on rodents, copperheads do the same thing. Uh, they're that middle of the ecosystem. They are predators, but they also fall prey to things like hawks, uh, great blue herons, or larger snakes, especially king snakes, love to eat copperheads. Uh, so that is why these are so important to the ecosystem. And if you do see them in your yard, you don't have to feel obliged to kill them. While they will occasionally strike at pets or people when they feel threatened, these guys are not out to get you. I'm sure all of you have heard stories of copperheads chasing people or going after dogs, but that just doesn't happen. That's not in these guys' behavior. They will bite when they feel threatened as the last resort, they don't like to use their venom, but they don't have to, because venom takes time to replenish, uh, and it also takes energy to replenish. Uh, they would much rather just hide under uh, structure during the day and go hunting at night and keep your house free of rodents and other pests. Uh, so these are super useful snakes. 
Uh, they're actually a good sign uh, if you have them around your house. It means that there is good structure for uh, other herpetofauna, and it also means that you're probably going to have less rats and other things like that inside your house. So when you see them, it can be a little bit scary. If you do have pets or children, uh, the best way to avoid a copperhead bite uh, is just to be aware that they do like cover out in yards, old toys, things like that. And also walking around in your yard uh, during the evening hours might not be a good idea, both because you will have less visibility and the copperheads will be able to see you better. Okay, good. All right, guys, now I want to take a minute to really talk about how to identify a copperhead snake. Now, this is the area uh, that many people are very fuzzy on about copperheads. Everyone knows they're venomous, uh, and everyone knows at least someone who's seen a copperhead. But there's lots of myths circulating about what copperheads look like. I've had people identify black rat snakes as copperheads, king snakes, water snakes, garter snakes. Mm -hmm. Just about every other snake can be misidentified as a copperhead. Um, but copperheads have a very, very unique pattern. You can see from the top, if you're looking at it, it almost looks like an hourglass. Now on the sides, if you're looking at it from that angle, you can see it's kind of like a Hershey's Kiss, all right? Uh, it's triangular, but there's usually some dots in there. So and the edges are a little rough. So I would say a Hershey's Kiss and then a diamond on the top. Now other snakes look similar to that, but the only other snake in North Carolina with a pattern that is almost exactly mimicking of that is the cottonmouth, which is actually the copperhead's closest cousin. Uh, now lots of people do try and use things like the head for identification, but I would not recommend that. Um, copperheads do not have that same bulky look to their heads that other pit vipers do, simply because their venom glands are a lot smaller. So their heads can actually look very similar to other snakes. For instance, uh, northern water snakes will flatten their heads to look similar to copperheads. Uh, and they can easily be misidentified, but the copperhead does have that pattern, very distinctive. Uh, and once again, the only other snake that has a pattern just like this is the copperhead, which is also venomous. Now, as a baby, there is one really easy tip you can use to identify. So if you're looking at a small snake, um, probably smaller than a foot, and trying to figure out if it's copperhead or not, you can actually look at the tail. Now, this one just barely has some remnants left on that tail. Um, but as a baby, these tails are actually green, hornet green or yellow. Uh, all baby copperheads have tails like that, and so do baby cotton mouths. Now that is both to warn predators that they are venomous, but a baby copperhead can also use that as a lure to attract insects. So you'll see them waving that tail and getting insects to come in, and they will eat those. Uh, so as an adult, look for that pattern, uh, and as a juvenile, you can look for the tail and the pattern. And that's the best way to identify these snakes. Now, if you are bitten by copperhead, you should seek medical attention. Uh, the bites can lead to localized tissue damage because the venom is hemotoxic, and that means it destroys your blood cells. And if you get bit on an extremity anywhere that uh, doesn't receive very much blood flow, like a finger or a toe, uh, risk of infection is very high. But their venom is considered pretty mild uh, as compared to other pit vipers. For instance, cottonmouth venom is estimated to be about 10 times as potent as copperhead venom. So bites are rarely fatal. In fact, I think there have only been four documented cases of a copperhead uh, fatality. And the reason for that fatality was an allergic reaction. It wasn't because the venom itself uh, killed the person. So these guys are very common. They are venomous, but just like other snakes, they fulfill that middle layer of the ecosystem. Uh, they are just like other snakes, very, very crucial and very good indicators of a healthy environment and we are going to have to get used to having them around us um, because they, they aren't going to leave anytime soon. They are one of the most successful urban colonists in the reptile world, uh, and they are an animal that should be respected, uh, and they're an animal that is very beautiful and should be appreciated as well. To conclude, I would like to say once again that these snakes, while feared by many, are generally secretive animals who would much rather survive in peace than interact with human beings. They will bite to defend themselves, but will not go out of their way to harm you or I. And if you are lucky enough to see one in the wild, they are best left alone. The best way to avoid a bite is to not interact with the snake. And I only capture this individual to show you its features up close and to collect data as part of a reptile location mapping project. If you leave them alone, they will leave you alone. Well everyone, that's all for today's video. I really hope that you enjoyed and learned something new about the copperhead snake. 
If you did think that this video was cool, make sure to subscribe right now for new wildlife content coming on Saturday mornings, and leave a like to show your support. If you see something that I can improve on, please let me know in the comments section below. Thanks everybody, and keep adventuring everywhere. This is Ben Zeno of The Wild Report, signing out. Here we go.